Hello, uh, I'm Mark Stolzenberg. I'm the director of the New York Acting School for Film and Television and the CEO of Circle of Light Films in New York City. And we are doing our first episode of Fascinating Actors in New York City. And I'm interviewing various acting actors who are studying at my school and have worked in my films because they all have very interesting stories. And we're starting out tonight, we're talking to Bella Britt, who is one of my best students and she's developed into a totally professional actor. She's working in films and uh, we're, we're gonna have a little discussion for you. So, um, Bella, tell me about your background a little bit. What, what was your life prior to acting like? All doom and gloom. No, it was... <laughs> No, I'm actually a medical doctor. I do uh, emergency medicine and done that for, I'm not going to say how many years, um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I was, you know, in scrubs in the ER, um, a mess most of the time, but that was my life. Wow. I knew you were a doctor, but I didn't know you did ER. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's very consoling. I mean, I could drop dead on the set someday, you know? You yeah. do that, right? <laughs> right? I recommend that you do not, but sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's Couple great. Couple pushes on your chest and we'll be good. Okay. So that's really fascinating. Um, so how is it that you became interested in acting if you were a doctor? Well, you know, I've pretended like I was an actor since I was a little girl, you know, did commercials in the in the mirror. So, I, so I've been a pretend actor for a long time. <laughs> but um, I did uh, in school, obviously, I did theater and musicals and love that. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I loved it. It was always I was always so nervous for those kinds of things. I mean, it's, it's the, the performance and on stage love acting, but the on stage thing, not as much. So I really wanted to do film and television and something on camera, try that out. And so one day uh, during the pandemic, when I um, was wondering, okay, I've got to either make a jump or not do this. Then I searched and searched and I found you. And I was like, oh, <laughs> well, I think, I think a lot of people kind of rediscovered themselves during the pandemic. Uh, a lot of people s decided to change directions in their life during that period. So that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, so tell me about uh, what happened when you started studying with me at the New York Acting School for Film and Television. Mm -hmm. And um, I noticed the first day of your, cl the first class you took, that you were special, honestly. I'm not making this up. I just said, this woman got ha has what it takes and she's gonna go far. And I was right. Um, so, but tell me like a little bit about your experience learning to act and the school and the whole process you went through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, first of all, I mean, thank you. And I, I was so nervous obviously the, the first class uh, when I joined and got on the camera and saw people. And then the moment you spoke, it was the first moment you spoke and you were so welcoming and, and just kind. And it was as if I was already an actor, you know, it was just the professionalism. And, uh, and so uh, honestly, I felt from that point on, I thought, wait a second, I can do this. You know, I have, <laughs> Some, it just felt, you know, I felt more confident because that was brought in just from the class, just by showing up, just by the way that you even um, just engaged uh, in the confidence that you had in, in me and the other actors. And I was able to see a couple feedback, you know, before I actually went on for my turn. And I thought, oh, my goodness, he really does just want to help. And he really is talking um, to I felt like you were talking to me when you were talking to everybody else, you know, really mm -hmm. on my level, I was a beginner and I didn't feel like I was out of place at all. And that was a big deal for me. So mm -hmm. the first day, um, uh, I think it's amazing. First of all, I think you're amazing and incredible and fully talented, but jumping in on the first day to, to doing scenes and doing monologues and being on screen and having that screen and having that uh, taped is so um, invaluable just to be able to see myself after the class a couple days and um, see how I am on screen. I think 
I didn't even know that that existed or that we, some, we did that in a class without having been you know, a professional actor for years. So that was um, pretty life-changing uh, from the beginning. And it just sort of grew and rolled and, and uh, went from there. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's great. Thank you. That's nice to hear. Um, I try, I consciously try to do that with my students, exactly what you said. It's not just wasn't born that way. I have to work at it a little bit. <laughs> but um, okay, that's nice. Lovely to hear. So Bridget has, how long have you studied with me? About almost uh, two years, about a year and a half, maybe. Right. Yeah. And she's had some very interesting uh, a range of experience. Bridget has done two of my movies, which uh, I produced through my production company, Circle of Life Films. And in the first movie you played, what was your character's name? I don't remember. I wrote the script, but I don't remember. What was your character's name? I was Bernice. I was the mom. Bernice, you were the mom yeah. in yeah. a sort of weird Adams family type family who uh, communicates in the seance with their dead dog. Mm -hmm. So are you interested in this yet? Yeah, you should be. <laughs> yeah. It's very funny. And Bridget just kicked her performance out the window. She was fabulous. Um, uh, but you can rent that movie on at Circle of Life Films. Uh, dot com. It's our streaming channel, and you'll find Bridget Bella doing her performance there. It's called uh, "We Love the Kreplox. Mm -hmm. And um, so, uh, tell me about. And we, she also has done. We just finished wrapping a film called Princess Morella, mm -hmm. which is about a young woman, fourteen-year-old girl, who is a healer. And all these crazy people come in to get help and advice, and she heals them. And uh, what was your character's name in that, Brittany? I was Brittany. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brittany. Tell us about your tell us about your two parts that you played in both the films. Okay. Yeah. First, Bernice was um, playing. We love the Kreplox. Was so fun. I mean, it's this out of bounds kind of uh, story and a beautiful story about family kind of coming together and these crazy kids and the, the writing, thank you, Mark, <laughs> is incredible <laughs> and fun. And Bernice um, is this mom who tries to pull her family together. She's not actually together herself um, because she's dealing with all these sort of crazy things and she just wants her family to to, to be a unit again and be loved. Um, and their dog kind of is able to, to, to reunite them and they're able to find a connection through that. And I love Bernice because she's, um, you know, she's she's hopeful and she doesn't seem to get down very much about it. Um, she gets angry and upset with her kids and her life and her situation, but there's always some sort of hope and a glimmer of hope. And you can see that she really loves, she loves her husband and she loves her kids and she loves her dog. Uh, so, I, you know, I thought, it was an easy character to play in, in that sense um, because, you know, it's natural to love. And so that was a good thing to start with um, mm -hmm. for my career. Um, mm -hmm. So I love that part. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. And you, she really was, you really were fantastic in it. Um, it was a tricky, tricky role because you had to be sort of kind of character -y and eccentric, kind of a little bit on the Adams family side. But I, I worked yeah. very hard to get everyone in the film to come across, across lovable and real at the same time and somebody that we could all relate to, not just some strange family. And I think you did a great job with that. That was great. Thank so you. what about what about the other movie? Uh, we haven't we haven't put that we're in post production with Princess Morella. Tell me mm -hmm. about that a little bit. Oh, Princess Morella is hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, so it, my character is Brittany, and I won't talk too much about the rest of it because I don't want to spoil it because it's super <laughs> fun. Um, but my character is, she is, uh, she is a character <laughs> in and of herself. Um, she's, she's super full of love and she thinks um, just wild ideas about, about, about life and, and animals. And she is, um, uh, she's, kind of eccentric, actually very eccentric, um, and has um, has a marriage that's sort of on the rocks and, 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 and you know, not uh, not the same because her husband is, is sort of a strict and, and structured man. And she is, there's nothing structured about her. She is a wild child from back in the day um, that just <laughs> wants love and happiness. And 
and is not really in touch with reality. Um, she has a sort of beautiful um, picture of a of just a simple life that she just wants love. And she wants everybody to love and be loved. Um, so she, in, in that sense, she's uh, she's a character because she's not really grounded in, in you know how things how reality is um but she's a, a refreshing character because you think of her as wow if everybody could just think that simply then things would just be a lot easier so i i like her um it was fun to play it was fun to play her i can't you know every character the characters too that i've played so far have both been fun so it's hard to pick which one i like better um, <laughs> right. i don't think i can do that um but there's something special about britney um that was just you know, kind of light. Mm. She was, uh, she had this hobby with cal caterpillars, I think. Yes. Could you tell us about that? Yes, she has uh, a kind of like, she has a special quality um, that she gets very, um, uh, uh, oh, I can't even think of the word. She has this um, unnatural I guess it's unnatural ability to remember small facts about caterpillars. Um, mm -hmm. You know, something computer-like about her that she's so so up in the air about everything. But when it comes to something, which caterpillars, I have no idea why she picked that. Actually, I do know why she picked that just when she was a child. Um, but she knows every detail, which no one should ever know about caterpillars. And she's very passionate about them and carries them with her and has names for all of them in a whole farm. So it's this <laughs> crazy hobby that she that right. she has and that she loves. And it makes her um, it makes her kind of quirky and, and special. Um, mm -hmm. But she's very smart about it, which you wouldn't you wouldn't notice that until she speaks and you think, oh my goodness, this woman who couldn't spell her name, you think, um, knows every single detail about the number and varieties of caterpillars. So, Right. Okay, great. Good. Yes. Okay. That was very funny. Very funny stuff you did in the movie. Um, so um, let's see. What is your, what, it, what, it, what is your, what do you love the most? What is your favorite part of being an actress? What do you like the most about it? Mm -hmm. um, I, I love everything. I just get to, you get to experience a full range of emotions and be someone you could never be and and play, play make-believe in, in your head and your heart. Um, in, um, in just a and connect with people in such um, a deep way. And so it's, you know, it's like when you're a kid and you do make believe and now this way you get to do it and just really fully do it and fully experience it in, in, in a real way. Um, so I love that about it. And I also love the challenge. Uh, you know, I always thought that acting was, oh, okay, natural and I'll read and I can memorize, I'm gonna memorize. I'm, I'm a physician, man, I can memorize. Yeah. It's, 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 you know, it's what you do, um, but, it's so much more complicated and difficult. And you think, I mean, the hours of going through a character and how would I feel and how would I think and how do I actually make that come across? And I remember being in class with you and I'm thinking, and you're saying, okay, well do it this way or, or play it this way. Or did you think about that? There's a backstory and what's behind your eyes. And I thought, oh my goodness, there's so much work that goes into the natural appearance of an actor. And when they're doing or playing a role, um, that's, it looks easy and it looks like they're real, but honestly, that is, that is the, um, result of hours and hours and days and weeks of work, of work and just to come off flawless and playing, you know, when you're a play actor to come off mm -hmm. that flawless is not easy. And so mm -hmm. I think I love the challenge. I love right. the challenge of making it look easy when it really is not. Yeah. And that's the thing about art in general, I believe, and it's certainly true of acting that's a very keen observation you made that the thing that allows you to appear to be spontaneous and free is preparation, homework, mm -hmm. work. And when you can, when you do your homework and you rehearse and you prepare, then you can't, that allows you to be free. It allows you to be spontaneous when you're performing. It's like when you're a musician and you're playing a concert. I mean, you, when you're practicing at home, it's, you have to drill the scales it's drudgery, rehearsing drudgery. But then when you're giving the concert because you're so well rehearsed, it just, then you can fly with, with what you're doing. It's the same thing with acting. Yeah. Um, yeah um, 
So uh, what was the what's the worst thing about acting or the worst thing that ha has happened to you as an actress? Um, you know, I I can't say anything that happened when, when filming or on screen or or, or mm -hmm. anything like that. The worst thing is just the waiting. You know, you audition and you just wait <laughs> and you right. wait and then you start to doubt and then you wait. And um, and it, that's just 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 torture. And <laughs> In my in my other life, in my other job, an emergency. I mean, things are getting things things just go quickly, <laughs> and so you expect, you know, you expect you're working, you're doing this, and things are supposed to happen, and that that is just not <laughs> that is just not this business, um, and so just being patient um, is hard for me, and so I think that's the worst part. Um, mm -hmm. But being able to speak to other actors and to you, um, obviously, and to Karen, um, and knowing that that's that's how it goes, and it, you know it's just a process, and um, then it it makes it a little easier. But honestly, mm. that's the worst thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's probably the, I would say a lot of people would feel that that's one of the worst things about film acting is yeah. having to stand around and do nothing, and then all of a sudden go and be perfect <laughs> you know so hurry up and wait you say in the business hurry up and wait and yeah. that could be a little uh it could be a little weird and difficult to deal with um okay great uh so do you have any very special moments that happened to you while you're performing or in class that you kind of remember in your head yes yes uh i always remember the ending of the crap box because it was my first um, short movie, uh, first film, and um, the in the last scene um, and when you said uh, when when we ended when we when we finished and you're like that's a wrap and I, thought, I just thought oh my gosh <laughs> we did it and it was I mean the exhilaration um, it was just an amazing feeling like, wait a second wow wow it's done. And right. just hearing you, hearing you say that, and hearing us end in that, and it wasn't even like a sigh of relief; it was a sigh of wow. So that's <laughs> the best, and I will remember that. I will remember um, the last moment of my first film um, mm -hmm. as being super, super special, and I thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Great. So, do you have? What are your plans for the future? What are you trying? How are you moving forward in your life with acting? Um, so um, through. The, the school, I was able to meet and I guess through our agent showcase and such um, to get in touch with or be introduced to uh, managers and um, get feedback for my work. And so through that process, I um, was able to get signed by um, a talent manager. So now I have representation, which is huge. And I'm so thankful for uh, mm -hmm. to you and for all the hard work and everything that you've um, put into me, which I don't know why, and <laughs> well, super humbled for that. Well, if you could, if you could do anything as an actress in the future, what would you like to be doing in the future? If you had your dream job, yeah, it would, what be, would film. That be? Mm -hmm. film, yeah, film, yeah, yeah. any kind of film. I, mean, I love comedy, mm -hmm. so okay. it would be a, a comedy thriller film. That would be, mm -hmm. you know, that would be magic for me. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I would do anything in television. It would be great too. And a series, a comedy series would be fun. Uh, but truly a, 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 just a, a blockbuster film, a comedic film would be, would be my, would be my, my, my dream. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you, Bella. That was great. It was great talking to you. Uh, so delightful to speak with you. And um, how would someone contact you if they want to hire you or use you in a movie or something like that? What, yes. So, um, yeah. Thank you. So they would uh, contact my manager. It's Talent Express. So it's um, Evelyn Francisco. She is 516-688-4219. 516-688-4219. Or you can look at um, the talentexpress.com and the information will be up there and, and my profile should be up there. So, so if you do want to contact the New York Acting School for Film and Television. We have ongoing classes year round, everything from a trial class one night to a full year intensive program. Um, classes are ongoing all the time and uh, we have great students and uh, Bella's a perfect example of the kind of people you will meet in my acting studio, stimulating, beautiful, wonderful people. So where can we, uh, oh, and you can, 
contact my school at actingclassforfilm.com. Actingclass, F-O-R, film.com is the website. Or call me at 212-877-2219. 212-877-2219. Well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure, Bella. See you thank soon. Thank you, you so much. I think I'll be seeing you soon in class, right? Yes, yeah, in a couple days. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So, by the way, let me just say this as an addendum. Uh, some people think you take study for six months and you get a, you graduate and you're finished with acting. Untrue. It's a process that goes on for the rest of your life, and you continually have to reboot and freshen up what you're doing. Uh, it's been said that Lawrence Olivier goes back and takes beginner acting. Is he still alive? I can't. Re I never can remember. I think he is. I don't know. Ah! But Lawrence oh. Olivier, one of the greatest actors of all time, uh, has said that he takes beginning acting classes just to kind of start all over and refresh and reboot his technique. So it's something that you can do for the rest of your life, and it's a joy, I think, for most people who are really committed to it. Okay, thanks again, Bella. Thank nice you so you. much, Mark. Bye-bye.